Business Brain, episode 399. Wow, 399. For Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. Welcome to Business Brain, the entrepreneur's podcast where we are small businessing and using the mindset with which we approach our small businessing everywhere in our lives, every single week here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Our sponsors today include Shopify.com slash SBS, uh, where you can go and enjoy a 14-day trial and full access to their entire suite of features and... Business capital providers at bcproviders.com slash SBS. We'll talk a little bit later to learn how you can get funded for as much as 250K in as little as three days. It's good stuff. I'm glad to be here. I'm Shannon Jean from Lafayette, California. Uh, I love those sponsors. I think it's great. Uh, you know, I love doing this show because we always have a great intro topic or introduction that you and I get to talk about before the show starts. And it's <laughs> awesome. It's like a, it's like private small business therapy that sometimes goes well beyond that as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's great. I want to recognize coming up on our 400th episode. I just want to recognize the value that I get out of, uh, connecting with you each week. It's, it's fantastic. And, Same. Uh, yeah, I it- love it. It really is a wonderful thing. I've, I, I, I know we used to argue about who gets the most out of the show. I think we've stopped because we know that I do. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, it is that small business therapy. And, you know, we can do that for you folks, too. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Send us anything, really, anything that you've got going on that you're, you know, stressing about or celebrating, whatever. We're, we're here to help and we're happy to do it. Privately, if there's lessons that we can share with the audience, we sure we certainly will. But, you know, we'll keep your details private. Of course, we've done it for other listeners uh, over the years, and, and we'll certainly extend that to you, but only you. Yeah. Like the rest of the people right. listening, no, but you, that's yes, it. that's right. And, you know, we're having a love fest here because we love doing the show. But what about people that are kind of burnt out on things? And, and maybe, you know, we've done episodes of about avoiding burnout as a business owner and things to keep yourself motivated and charged up. But today, oh, I'd love to talk about employee burnout. You know, there's a lot of people going back to work and yeah. you know, how do you keep people motivated and all that kind of stuff. But w- before we jump into that, I, I found this interesting article that I was reading about virtual employees. Okay. And I started thinking, Okay, that I think that's coming more and more as as small businesses particularly look to save money and um, be, become more efficient. But I also I think you could frame it as it's it could be a way to help your other employees avoid burnout from having to do so many repetitive tasks and they could focus on things that are more productive or more enjoyable and more long term let's say career building type of, of efforts. And um, I would be definitely interested to hear how many people out there are embracing things, you know, virtual cashiers, customer service. We've had companies that are, you know, virtual receptionists on the show that talk about their services. And um, I think that, I think it's a good thing, but it all depends on the way you look at it. Well, and I want to, I want to, clarify the definition of virtual here because for years we've used the term virtual assistant to mean remote assistant right someone that's not in your office maybe somebody that's even in another country you know the philippines is a a common place for virtual assistants the you know like romania was super common for programmers but these are real human beings that 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 which is why i call them remote And especially now, because when you're talking about virtual employees, you're not talking about real people. You're talking about like computers and engines that are doing things that, like you said, are repetitive tasks and kind of things that might cause other employees like real humans to burn out. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And yeah. So yeah, I'm talking about, I guess both uh, in the sense that like the example in this article were, uh, you know, restaurants in particular, yeah. thou, you, you know, walking into, especially fast food or, or fast casual type restaurants where you walk in and, uh, you know, ordering on a, on a touchscreen type thing yeah. instead of yeah, virtual you know, cashier. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I was trying to 
think about how I could have applied that to my, you know, various businesses and, and yes, you would have less employees, right? Because you, you don't have to have those folks, uh, interacting with people. Um, but I think it could alleviate a lot of pressure from the more mundane tasks that you have to do over and over again. And, um, I'd, I'd love some feedback, you know, yeah. um, feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell me how you've used it. If, if you think it's a good idea or if I'm wrong and heartless and people are going to lose, you know, more jobs, I don't know what kind of framework, uh, you have on it, but, uh, Mine is optimistic. You know what that sound is, Shannon? That is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is this platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like all of us the resources that were once reserved only for big business. And they can be customized for our needs you can have a great looking online store that brings your ideas to life and tools to manage your day to day and drive those ever important sales. Shannon and I, we've used Shopify several times in different ventures because they do it so well. They figured it all out and they're constantly iterating and innovating. It's fantastic. And it's not just us, right? Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, that sound happens because a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. 24-7 support, so you're never alone. Shopify grows with you. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you mentioned uh, our, our topic today of em avoiding employer burnout or at least mitigating employee burnout. Yeah. And and I think this is super important, right? With, with the job. I mean, it's important in general because everybody's a human being and, and you want people to enjoy working at your company. You want people to be yeah, right. happy there. And so th there's a good reason there to avoid burnout. But then we've added to that the fact that it's hard to find people. I guess it's getting easier now, yeah. right? But, you know, it's certainly over yeah. the last year, it's been harder to find people. And so, you know, a burned out employee that leaves often leaves a hole for a very long time. And, and even if they don't, you've got to train somebody new. And if you're a small business, you know darn well that you never replace anyone. You pull in someone new, perhaps, but that role will be defined by who that new person is. And it might be better. It might be worse. It might just be different. You don't know. But there's no just simple replacement in a small business. So you, you got to yeah. you, you, you want to, you know, I, unless you're unhappy with the status quo <laughs> uh, and, and by status quo, I mean, the team that you have, you always want to be pushing the business forward. But if unless you're unhappy with the team that you have, then uh, then you don't want to burn them out. You don't want to send them backing that. That's not a good yeah. that's not a good thing. So, yeah, I, I, I I've been thinking a lot about this lately. I've always thought of, well, I, I've always thought a lot about it, but it's yeah, sure. it's something it's, yeah. trying to keep people motivated. I mean, your yeah. employees are your greatest asset, right? Right. Uh, you have to protect them, nurture them, support them. Um, and, you know, when you start seeing signs of stress and people have anxiety or calling in sick all the time or having health issues, you know, people look depressed or act, you know, and you could just see it. Well, those are, those are not good signs. Uh, and it's, certainly there's outside influences that can cause those things as well, but it may be happening at work or combined with outside, uh, you know, influences that cause it as well. And I think it, it is very important to talk about, um, you know, there's a mentality that's just like, oh, you know, come on, you got to, you know, toughen up and, and do the work and everything. But it's a, it's a different time. And I, I, yeah. I think we have to recognize that that's not the answer. No. And I don't at least think not that's, for everybody. That's I, in in my businesses. That's never been the answer because that's not how I treat me. I, I had to figure yeah. out a long time ago that uh, my employees don't necessarily want to be treated the way I want to be treated. Right. If I were an employee and 
And that makes sense, right? I, I finally came to that realization and it was like, oh, they, they really, they, you know, they, they want to be treated differently than I would want to be treated. But guess what? They don't want to be the business owner, right? Like this, is, right. this makes sense. However, in this regard, it's everybody's just a human. And so, you know, a lot of the things that we do, the flexibility that we talk about, that we yeah. afford ourselves, it, uh, oftentimes we can afford to our, our teams and that is a good thing. That that is generally something people I agree. want. Yeah, or people. And, and I think we. Yeah, yeah, and we've always discussed having this great culture, and you know, whatever it is, Friday barbecue, yeah. you doing the grunt work, you taking the trash out, showing people, the, you know, this kind of stuff. So it, it, I think that helps a lot. And the one thing, though, I would point out, I, I want to talk about. Uh, you know, what causes burnout and, and some things I think, you know, we can do to, to help avoid it or address it when it does, if it happens. But sure. one of the first things that I, I always asked a question of our managers and supervisors when there was other kinds of problems is I would say, is, is this a, a one-off or a systemic problem? Oh. You know, try, right? Because if you jump through every hoop trying to address and create policies around a, a one-off or one individual. I don't. I think you're doing a disservice to your other employees. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's subjective, you got to really be careful. Everything we're going to talk about today is is objective stuff you can put into place that everybody can take advantage of. Yes. And so I but, think but you have to ask yourself. But you're right, though. Like, don't don't just let one person drive the yes. the definition of this now. If someone brings up something, I, I always use the, the what I call my resonate test, right? And and this is true of reviews that we get for the podcast, right? It's anything where we get something critical or some suggestion. When those come, when you know, when those come in, I read them, and it's fine. I've been publishing online for you know, almost twenty five years now, so I like I, I, I've learned to have a pretty thick skin about this kind of thing, right? And and I think even just running a business, you, you sort of learn this. Well, when something comes in, and immediately I feel myself reacting to it, like, "Oh, we need to do that." That tells me that I've been thinking about this for a while. Uh, it's rare that that happens, but it, you know, if if somebody identifies and perhaps articulates something that I have yet to crystallize, bam, I'm I'm thankful for it. It's like, okay, great, yep, great idea. Let's go do it. But you can't do that all the time, and you have to yeah. really learn to identify those things that are someone else crystallizing your thoughts for you versus someone else just venting. And and like it can be both, but oftentimes it's just the venting. And and you know, you need to. Factor that in, especially when it's one of your employees, but you can't just react to everything. No, and, and you've you got to be careful and with that. I would suggest if you start to, you know, someone starts having some issues and you're trying to figure it out and help them at that work is documenting those things. Hmm. So if you see them arise in other departments and they may they usually come up in different, they manifest themselves in different ways from different people, but it may be that. It, it is happening across, you know, different employees or yeah. teams. Uh, but if you have taken notes and you documented, you're like, hey, you know what? We're seeing this. People are stressed about this or people are really like, you know, I, I always try to judge the mood, you know, by when I was walking around, you know, when I walked in and said, hey, good morning. How's it going? And try to talk with everybody. Did people have a smile on their face? Did they look like they were happy when they came in? Did yeah. they, you know, those kinds of things t are very telling to me is trying to read people. So, so you just want to ask yourself that uh, before you start implementing programs and policies, uh, you know, maybe somebody's just having a bad day. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Right. And, and, and that, and that happens. happens. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like it. So as, yeah. So as I was looking and, and researching for the show, you know, I, I came across this Gallup poll, 7,500, full-time employees and they ask them, you know, Hey, why are, or, you know, what causes employee burnout, you know, in your opinion? And I'd love to go over them because I, th I think they, uh, they are, it's pretty broad, but I also think there's a underlying commonality with them okay. that I want to discuss at All the right. end. Let, and, let, and, and so, yeah, let's start let, going let me, through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, I, you know, the first one was people, and this was number one, people felt that they were treated unfairly. 
And I, I want to say uh, my own biases. I added the word felt because I, I have uh, this word fair. I always struggle with, right? What really is fair? But it, it's subjective. So, to, I mean, it's subjective. It, it yeah. is subjective. There, there are degrees of it, of course. And, I, you know, yeah. at, at some point we all agree, OK, that's not fair. Right. Like, yeah, but, that's right. But I, I, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we all have our our, our barometer there and, and they're set a little bit differently. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the number one thing that people yeah. that they felt caused, you know, uh, burnout as they, they were treated was unfairly. There, was there and any so, any articulation on that? Like, what was the definition of unfair? Because that would help. No. OK. Yeah, <laughs> it would help. Yeah. yeah Gallup's better at surveys than that. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm we'll a little link disappointed. The survey in the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll link it. And I'm, maybe I, I may have missed something in there. But, sure. I, but I think that you could the, the key here about being fair is you need to create a, these objective standards to avoid the perception of things being unfair, right? Yes, is yes. is you, you have to quantify things when you can. And, and when I say that, things like uh, training, very important that it's objective. How are you going to get trained? How are you going to advance within the organization? What is the career path for everyone? Right. Yeah. It's very important that everyone can look at your whatever job they have and say, okay, this is the training I receive. Here's what I need to do. Here's how I can advance. And on the other side of that is your discipline policies have to really be objective as well. Yeah. Be and I found I've had a hard time with this because if I, I put a lot of value in an attitude and personality, and if someone it doesn't quite do something right, but I know they're such a, you know, they have great personality, great attitude. They help all other stuff. I, I have found myself giving them slack and having and other people pointing out like, Hey, you know, you can't let so-and-so get away with it. Like coming in late. Yeah. You, 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 no matter how good an employee is, if you let somebody come in late and they have, Hey, we open at this time and your job is that you're here at, you know, eight thirty, whatever it is. If you have that kind of job, if you, if you have somebody coming in late and you just let that happen, it, it, it's very it's subjective and people start to think that's really not fair. Right. Yeah. That's not fair. Yeah. And so try to think about objective standards, uh, any, any opportunity that you can. And you may have to ask your employees, to, what are the objective standards that we have to apply to these situations and help build uh, systems around that, you know? Yeah. And, and I think I'm that's, in. that's definitely, definitely reasonable. So, yeah. um, number two was an, uh, not surprising, unmanageable workload. Okay. And, you know, I, I understand that too. <laughs> and, and one of the things that always has gotten me in trouble is not communicating about the workload enough and, and thinking that, well, I assigned this, they said, okay, and I didn't hear anything back. So, so everything must be fine. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's a, a mistake. A, you know, you have to track progress you got to have regular check-ins you got to use some software to help keep things going and to catch problems early whether you use you know slack or other to do other you know like asana and other software things sure. to, to keep pro projects going that kind yeah of stuff. yeah yeah um, you know and and uh, the other part is you have to listen to your team and are you hearing things about you know Hey, this stuff isn't getting done. I'm not getting this from this person in a timely manner. And that, that comes back to walking around and connecting with your, your group and uh, hearing what's going on. Right. Um, one of the things I also like on this one is, do you have good data? Can you compare past results with current work? Like in my you know world, we were always repairing, refurbishing things. And we kind of had an idea of the typical technician, can do X number of repairs an hour or X number of refurbishments per day. And we would measure that. And we would, you, you, you could look at that objectively and say, is this person in that range? You know? Yeah. Right. Um, are, are they, so, are they, are they slacking, uh, slacking? Are they underperforming? And what's the reason for that? It might be that they're just slacking, right? but it, maybe, it, it yeah, could be yeah. something else. It could be, like you said, they're not getting what they need and they may be yeah. feeling th the frustration perhaps even more than you would as the, you know, as the manager. So, yep. Yeah. That, that's a good point. And, and I think as managers or owners, 
we naturally think that, well, if there's a problem, they'll just come talk to me. But, oh, but that no. doesn't happen. No, right? no, it no. It doesn't happen. No, because yeah. they don't want to be the, the squeaky wheel, yeah. right? Like, I mean, right. if they really need something, they they will. But otherwise, no, people uh, absolutely just want to, like, especially working for someone like you or me where they know us well enough that they know, oh, we're just people who figure out how to get it done. Like when when nobody else yeah. is willing to just like bull, I always say, and I've said it on the show a bunch, bullheaded persistence, right? That's the key to my success. Well, if I say that all the time and I do, what do you think the message is that my team gets from that? Is it, okay, well, I should go to Dave for help every time I, I hit a stumbling <laughs> block or is it, no, no yeah. he's going to expect me to be bullheaded persistent, bullheadedly persistent. And the reality is I wish it would more of the former than the latter, yeah. but I know that, you know, the, the do as I do not do as I say thing is actually what happens. And so, and I've noticed this with all kinds of people that I've had, you know, working with us over the years, the, the, the my, my favorite one to share. And, and he knows that I share this is Adam and it, but it's happened with every programmer I've had uh, where they, you know, you, you get into this mode and you're like, OK, I want to just fix it. I'll figure it out because you kind of have to like, the, you know, being a, a programmer and in that in a, in a or a technician in that sense, you, you have to have some level of bullheaded persistence because you're going to run into things you don't know how to do. And you just got to start banging at it and figure out how to get it done. But two heads are better than one. Three heads are better than two. Right. And so you, you need to learn where that limit is where you're like, wait, I, I've I've sunk a ton of time into this. I haven't gotten anywhere. Let me just tell someone else about it. Perhaps in the process of doing that, I'll come up with the answer or they yeah. will. Right. You know, they'll see it a different way. And it's it's super important to check in with your team, because like I said, if you're like me, they will follow you and just try to figure it out for themselves. And that yeah. is, that's a, I mean, it's a great thing to have in your team, except for when it's better the other way. Hey, can your business use additional cash flow to help it grow or just get through a temporary rough spot? If so, our friends and our sponsor at Business Capital Providers may be just the thing you're looking for. Over at Business Capital Providers, they specialize in funding small and medium-sized businesses quickly and without the lengthy paperwork or strict collateral requirements. You're going to go to bcproviders.com slash SBS to find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours. You must be in business for one year and produce revenue of at least twenty-five k. All right. That makes sense. Quick and easy. There's a one-page application. They want six months of bank statements. All right, well, if you've been in business for a year, you've already got the six months of bank statements. They offer fast results. Like I said, no collateral required. When banks say no, business capital providers say yes. So again, go to bcproviders.com slash SBS to find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours and our thanks to business capital providers for sponsoring this episode. All right. So we've got three more things on this uh, Gallup list to sort of dissect. And then uh, we've got some actionable things that you can do, actions you can take in your workplace to help perhaps mitigate some of that employee burnout. So let's go uh, to number three on this list, which I believe if I'm looking at it right is lack of role clarity where people just weren't sure what was expected of them. That makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does. Yeah. yeah. that That's a, uh, you know, I think it comes down to like having a great job description about what, what's expected yeah. of you. Right. And, sure. and we, like we just talk about a, standardized onboarding so everybody gets a similar onboarding experience and the same with training you know making sure everybody gets access to the same kind of training and you know you really i think you have to kind of almost overdo it in, in my experience and it's different probably for every type of job but you really have to what are the detailed steps for you to be successful here Right. Yeah. And, and I, how, you know, I guess I call BS on all of this um, it, because, know, well, because what you're describing is a company where you have many people in 
you know, roles that are clearly defined. Right. But I think well, there's a lot of small businesses where that's just not true. the case. You know, you bring somebody in. Yes. You know, what are you here to do? Sales, customer support or, you know, or build a department to do something new that we've never done before. Like none of those those steps that we just outlined are are applicable because it's I think literally they are. up to the employee to come up with those. I mean, in partnership with management, but well, that's they a, aren't. Yeah. That's yeah. True. They aren't known on day one. That's yeah, but if you say, and, and these are things you have to develop over time. When yes. we were, and I was starting and hiring technicians and everything, I didn't do any of this. It was just well, like, well, that, here. That's what I'm saying is, is like you, of course, these people, of course. Are, people that are forging the path with you yes. are forging the path with you. So you can't tell them what the path is with, with any degree of detail. You can just sort of try and try and get them to buy into your crazy vision, which hopefully that's they true. do. Right. But, but I think, I think that's part of it is, is the, the trust me, <laughs> right. The trust me. Well, scenario. those are particular kinds of, those are particular kinds of people, but I that's would fair. say as you, yeah. as you build out your organization and you ask, uh, you know, add departments and, yeah. and start hiring you th this stuff becomes even more important i'll give you that uh, yes because, sure yeah as the business grows. because yeah 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 if you hire your first couple of employees and everybody's doing everything and wearing many hats well you're right with them in the trenches that's a different experience and as your business grows your magic that you bring to the the table every day you, you don't get to touch there and, and to connect with those employees as much as you would True. like Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's where this objective stuff, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I didn't have a job description in place when I hired, you know, my no. first few people. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, you can't. But I'm trying to give the benefit of looking back and saying, hey, this is how you have to do it. Objective yeah. data. Ask tons of questions. Talk with a lot of people, uh, you know, and, and talk with people regularly. And I agree. You, it. You got a few people, but it's along the same lines of like the e-myth, your name or your employee number one, employee number two is going to be in all kinds of boxes on the org chart. That's right. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's the development of systems over time that I think, cause like if you, if you only have a few employees and you got a couple, I mean, you know, somebody burnout, well, you can manage that, that a little differently and you're going to see it sooner. You're going to be like, Hey, you need to go Fair. take a vacation or you need to get out of here. Fair. Sure. But as you build up, you know, where you don't see every employee every day, that's when I think this stuff becomes more important. I, yeah. I wish we knew. Yeah. I, 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 as I'm going through this Gallup thing, I'm wondering just how relevant it actually is, right? Like what size companies were yeah. these people in? Be because some of this stuff, I mean, it's like, these are all relevant, but it's a good vehicle to have this discussion. It is correct. correct. I didn't pull any of the solutions that they talked about out of that. Oh, all I use from yeah. that. It was just the five, uh, the it, list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah. grabbed the list. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is okay, cool. This seems yeah. to have some validity and credibility. Yeah. Let's use this to introduce things that we've, we've talked. I mean, we're going to be at our 400 show next week. Yeah. I guarantee you, we've talked about every single one of these, uh, things before in in one form or another and so it's it's kind of trying to put it together into a package and i think whether uh i i think if you're a small business or a corporation i think it's applicable yeah you maybe it's not as officially executed right sure but in some way it it uh i think it's i think it's helpful yeah definitely all right well let, let's you know. let's go through the other two so we've got yeah uh, that's just, I was going to say the next one is lack yep. of communication and support from their managers, right? Yeah, and you know managers can really suck. And <laughs> you, I, you always mention you always mention the Peter principle, or often mention yes. the, the Peter principle, where you know you have a good employee and you keep moving them up until the point you, you know where they're not good anymore, and then they stick there. Uh, and that's often where a lot of middle management, you know, get, uh, winds up, right? Well, and that's where a lot of entrepreneurs wind up, too. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that this one may well be applicable to our audience here. It certainly is to me where like this yeah. is this is one of the ones I'm super aware of. And I know that I fail at it all the time, but 
I try to be better about it. I try to learn. I, I'm trying to, you know, in, in, uh, educate myself about how best to to support the folks that that work for me and and work on the team. And I, and I, like I said, I'm not I'm not the best at it, but I'm trying. So yeah, yeah, neither am I. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it be, I get so, you get so tied up in the day to day. That's and the I, thing. You yeah. know, you you don't stop. The, it really, the time I sit down to think and talk about this is when I prepare my notes for the show, and I'm hopefully have surrounded myself with people that help you know point these things out and implement these these uh systems that to help people avoid you know but if i walk around and everybody's joking around and there's humor in the workplace and i see smiles and i see people even eating lunch together yep and you know we have a friday barbecue and it it's because there's been times where you, you know i would do a friday event and lots of you know a number of people be like oh i have to go go somewhere else. i have to go run there and have to do this after that and I thought, well, that's there's something going on here when people yeah. don't want to stick around when you yeah, gotta you're go. Lunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's <laughs> something going on. So you start asking questions and you figure out, well, yeah, people aren't as happy as you might as you might think, you know. Um, and that's I love that, you know, and, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but like the concept of of cooking and food and cooking for your employees, if if you, depending how big your company is, of course, or small. Sure. Um, it's it's powerful because people relax. They put they let their guards down a little more when there's food involved. It's a age old uh, gesture that y you know you're cooking for them and bringing food to the. I mean, it's it, it's massively powerful. Oh yeah, and allows you to to get a sense of what's going on and and hear people talking. Well, you see them a, as humans. You see each yeah. other as humans. Yeah. No, I I um. I, I, it's been a long time since I've had a company where everyone is in the same physical location, right? Even the same physical state uh, where I could do this. But when we could, you know, when I was down in Texas, we had that computer nerds company and we did a lot of these kinds of things and it really made a difference. These days, what I really try to do is anytime we can get the team together, which is usually conferences, I break my rule at least once. My My rule is never eat a meal with the same person twice at a conference, right? You know, like in that, oh, okay, yeah. I always want to be getting to know new people, right? Or, or at least catching up with, with people I know, but not the same people all the time, right? Because it's super easy to just get caught in a rut and just, you know, hang out with the same people. But it, that's, not, that's not how things get done. However, any opportunity I have to get the team together and just enjoy a leisurely meal together where we can, you know, maybe we'll talk about a little bit of business and then just sort of let it fall aside. And then we can talk about whatever people are interested in their hobbies, their families, all of that stuff. And just, I, I try to become the, you know, the, the, uh, the host of the, of the thing, yeah. telling less stories right. of my own and just listening and making sure That's that hard. it is hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, very hard for me, especially, but you know, just listening and making sure that no one, not even me monopolizes the conversation and it, you know, everybody gets a chance to speak and everybody's comfortable and all of that stuff it, because it really is helpful. I mean, it, it makes the team more productive. It makes everybody happier, generally speaking to, to be able to just hang out and, and at a, the nice part is, part is at a conference or a trade show, no one is going home to their family that night, right? Everybody's just sort of yeah. away and detached. So there's no, uh, none of the normal life pressure pulling people. I got to go take care of my kids or, you know, the, the things that we all have to do. We've all sort of carved the time out already. And, and those can be, um, that, that can be a nice way to do this. Even if you you have a remote company or a mostly remote company where you can't you know cook for people on Fridays, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's my uh, lived experience. But I know you you do uh, you know online stuff, get together and yeah. talk with everybody, and and then when you do get together for events, it's the same uh, same but just different, right? It's same, and, yeah, um, that's it. Yeah, it it allows you a, a, a window into people that I think is really great and important, and it helps you in trying to help other people if they get, you know, burnt out. Yeah. And, you know, the last thing on this list was time pressure that people, you know, they, they feel burnt out from. And that, that's a tough one. You know, 
I think that um, they're unreasonable. What do they call it? Yeah, let me make sure I get it. Yeah, it was unreasonable, uh, time, unreasonable pressure. time pressure. You got it right. pressure, okay. Yeah. yeah, so I think the first thing you have to do is define what unreasonable is with, yeah. with, with, the, with the person. If you're going to talk projects and you're working on things or you're launching a new product or buying another company and all this kind of, what, well, what's unreasonable? What's, and, and what is reasonable? And each employee probably has a different... Um, sense of what that is or a measurement i guarantee you as the business owner (laughs) has a different uh yeah uh, idea of what that is so i I just think communicating and trying to you know you don't have to meet in the middle i still like setting deadlines um but you know maybe people just need some some training on managing their time as well um i I didn't write that down here but as as i was listening to you talk you know maybe there's yeah. tools that you can help or can you send them to a seminar or a class or an online training you know i i'm not that great at at time management but i just work all the time that's how i've overcome it failed at it terribly today yeah. and yesterday yep yep yeah but, me too, me too. Uh, yeah, and, you know us. yeah yeah and i i also like the the concept of building in like i call them like pressure relief valves if you will is what happens when you start to see things go sideways or Oh. Uh, smaller deadlines not being met because I don't think you should. I think you need to build in check ins, right? So it's like, yeah. okay, this let's especially for longer projects. Oh, it's a six week project, whatever. You you, you got to know what's going on each week. And if you start to see things, maybe you need to add resources. You know, maybe you have to assign another team member to it. Maybe they need to get a contractor to help, or maybe uh, some tools haven't been applied correctly or they don't know maybe the employee doesn't know about them um i think that's a great place to start to have the discussion about timelines and how to you know deal with that yeah with that pressure yeah you know? i like that that's good yeah 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 so those are my that that's that's my take on it the underlying thing as i mentioned in the beginning excuse me uh most of this stuff revolves around great communication yeah yeah. Uh, oh, and, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that is just a terrific uh thing to remember and and something to work on and focus that uh, to help you get get past a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Well, I've got a lightning round type of thing that I want to go through with some burnout mitigation tips, things that I've actually right. tried over the years with my companies that have succeeded sometimes. So, to, sort of feeding off of this last thing, the unreasonable time pressure, well, there's the obvious let's give people time off, right? You know, and okay. yeah. that can be vacations, sure. But also, if you've got, um, if you know that you've got a time of year when things are maybe a little softer or not quite as crazy, and maybe even when they are, finding a day, a midweek day to give people off, go, you know, shift to a four-day work week uh, for a little while or or longer term. We've done it before for, you know, a month or two here or there. I think we did it for a six month period once. Where, and I like the, the midweek day break, the Wednesday off, because it gives people the ability to come in and burn hard and then you get a break and then you burn hard for two days and then you get a break. Right. The, the three the three day weekends like are nice. Yeah. But by the end of the fourth day. Uh, everybody's sort of checking out anyway. Whereas if you've got two on one off, two on two off like that, I, I, I really like that. And it's, it's worked well for the teams when we've done this in the past, when things have just been nuts and it's like, okay, we need a press, like you said, a pressure relief valve, uh, you know, and if you can't do that, uh, free time where, and I don't mean time where they get to not work. I mean, time where they get to work on whatever they want Uh, And this can be I I think it needs to be at least a half day. And if it is going to be a half day, I think it needs to be a morning so that they're not spilling into it with the work that they're doing otherwise. But if possible, make it a full day. Right. And and maybe if if you can't afford a, a full day out of each person every week, maybe make it an every other Tuesday kind of thing where. You come in and you work on whatever you want to work on for the business. And of course, this doesn't work with every single job title and and all of that. But if you've got a, especially with a small business, it can, and it can really help grow because as I said before, your people define their own roles and sometimes sort of 
forcing them, forcing time upon them to do exactly that can be really helpful for the business. And it makes it fun because generally speaking, when you give people that free time, they're going to do something that they enjoy, that they see themselves excelling at, that they're comfortable doing and and maybe experimenting a little bit. And that that can be a good thing. I, I like the, the free yeah, time for sure. concept. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's good stuff. Yeah, they, there's I, I have I have two other things that we've done here. Uh, well, one we've always done, and that's the work from home days, right? If if you are yeah. bringing people back into the office and you're finding burnout, you know, if you need people in the office for some reason, fine. But, you know, maybe pick, you know, three days a week where people are in the office and two days a week where people are at home, you know, it's something like that to, to eliminate the pressure of the commute, the, you know, and all of those other things. Obviously, you've got to make sure – you are prioritizing productivity when people are working remotely. That's got to be part of your culture. Otherwise, it's going to just fail. And and it doesn't work with every business. I get that. Um, you know, the, uh, the last one is something that I learned from a company my dad worked for years ago, a company called the Danbury Mint. They, uh, they make all kinds of collectibles. Right. And you, I'm sure you've experienced some of their things like Christmas ornaments and, and th like they made a series of the James Bond cars and things like that. Just all kinds of collectibles. Uh, they their whole culture was they never made a bad hire. They only ever made a bad job assignment. And they mm. would yeah. when they realized somebody wasn't doing well in a certain job, they would move them around until they found a good home. Now, this was a company, I think it had, I don't know, somewhere between 100 and 200 employees. So they had enough room at the company to actually do this kind of thing. You may not be able to, to be quite so generous uh, in your company, but if you can allow people to mix it up, even if it's for a short period of time, like say, okay, hey, look, I know the two of you are completely burned out and swamped, you know, if it's possible, you know, have them swap jobs for a couple of weeks and 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 then come back and, and share what they've learned. Now, not everybody can do everybody else's job. I get that. But if you've got that opportunity, think about that, because there might be some things that can that can really work there for you. So, that's yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Those are my there's a lot of this stuff. And yeah, this good culture thing, the, the, the last listening to you talk, you know, the last thing I'll add to your lightning round yeah. is one thing we did that. Uh, made our, our people feel more in control is we gave everybody, I mean, our, our technicians were all using tools, but we did it for everybody, but we kind of gave them a, a mini budget, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, departments get budgets, managers have budgets to do certain things, but you give each employee a mini budget, like a technicians. Hey, if there's a tool that's under a hundred bucks or less, just, just order it yeah. and, and we'll, we'll reimburse you because they lose things. Things break. They don't want to have to ask, you know, whatever they burn through gloves. They do, you know, this kind of stuff. Sure. You're going to spend the money anyway, but give everybody an opportunity to have a, a mini budget to make their workspace better. You know, if they want to buy uh, whatever, uh, the, uh, a quartet, you know, that we yeah. really like that, you know, sits on your desk. It, it it makes people feel like, okay, they're, they're willing to invest in me and it doesn't need to be a lot of money. Uh, it's just the opportunity to spend some money, not have to ask anybody permission to make your, your work area or bring in tools that you need to do your, your work better. Um, it, it goes a long way to making no, it, people it, feel like they belong. Yeah, they belong and that they, they, they can yeah. sort of control some level of their own destiny. Yeah. I like it, man. Yeah. yeah this is good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Folks, thank you for listening. Uh, remember we said at the beginning, email us feedback at businessbrain.show. Uh, if you have any ideas for avoiding burnout, share those. If you are feeling burned out and you want to bounce some of this stuff off of us, also that too. We love hearing from you and uh, we would love to be, we would love to help. So come check it out. Feedback at businessbrain.show. And... Uh, yeah, keep living that charmed life, would you? Check out our sponsors. Shopify.com slash SBS. BCProviders.com slash SBS. We'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>